Hi, in this video I thought we'd have a little look at microscopes and my findings in trying to find one for the lab. Also I thought we'd have a look at some matte black PCBs from JLC PCB and what they look like and also we'll do a little mailbag on a parcel that's just arrived today. So firstly I thought we'd have a little look at microscopes and you'll notice recently I uploaded a video on that binocular microscope that was actually really nice and especially for the price was ideal for benchtop use and actually it was almost perfect for my setup other than the fact that I wanted a trinocular port so that I could record things for YouTube. So prior to getting asked about reviewing that item I'd already been looking at various microscopes and had a look on uh, AliExpress and eBay and Amazon and also obviously at Amscope and it looked like there were some very very similar models all across the board. Um, I'm not sure if it's the same general manufacturer but for example there's some microscopes that look identical to the Amscope ones but uh, the Amscope ones just have a few little uh, changes like all of the handles on it are made from metal rather than having uh, black plastic knobs like the ones on the front here. Uh, there's just little tweaks that Amscope would probably ask for to make it slightly more premium than some of the Chinese offerings. Uh, but you can certainly buy um, a trinocular microscope I was looking at for somewhere in the region of 300 to 350 pounds depending on what stand you chose. Uh, but I did kind of quite want this uh, double arm boom stand so that I could move it around and so it was a lot more robust um, you know, and, and didn't wobble around too much. But um, yeah, I kind of was having a look at stuff and there were various different configurations for the camera port and you could buy different objective lenses and uh, things like that. I came to the conclusion to buy this Amscope one just because it looked like um, it uh, had all the features I wanted. The microscope head in this case is the Amscope SM745 NTP and it's a slightly newer version of the one that everyone's been buying uh, previously. It has um, slightly different eyepieces and slightly different arrangement with uh, individual diopter adjustment and a few other tweaks um, so that you can uh, really customise the viewing experience depending on what your eyesight is like and whether you've got um, you know, different eyesight in each eye. So there's quite a lot of configurability on this one in particular. Uh, and it's also been modified so that you don't need any adapter or anything for the ring light. You can just clamp on the, the ring light onto the, um, the objective lens rather than um, the slightly older model had sort of a cone shaped head on here which meant you needed an adapter and it was all quite flimsy and we actually bought one of the older style for work and that adapter turned out just to be made of plastic and actually we couldn't get it to stick onto the microscope it kept dropping off so that was pretty poor uh, but I've been pretty happy with this one so far the only real complaint is firstly that it is actually really quite a big unit um, and I don't think this is the optimal setup for my bench because I'm losing quite a lot of space here just for the base. And I didn't really find anything ideal in terms of a stand that could clamp on the edge of the desk and then uh, be a little bit more articulating. So it looks like we're kind of stuck with quite a heavy base. I don't know if I'll move the base over into the back corner. Um, but certainly I'm not sure I've, I've found quite the optimal setup and that's where the smaller binocular microscope really uh, helps things because it's got such a small footprint and doesn't have all this bulk in the way uh, that it actually made it really really quite nice to use and I've been using that one a little bit more than uh, I have this more expensive one. But I, uh, I bought this directly from Anscope in the US because I wanted the black version, the UK version didn't, uh, the UK website didn't have the black one and I quite like the look of it and it fits in with everything in my lab. So, but the, uh, the general ordering process was pretty straightforward. Uh, import costs weren't really a surprise. I think it cost about £130, £140 or something like that in tax through FedEx. Um, so not too bad at all really. Um, but yeah, some findings that I found. Firstly with the camera port. So you can see here um, that I've actually got a different mount than the one that comes with the Amscope um, microscope generally speaking. So what you get with the microscope is this... Um, trinocular attachment and it's got a port in the top for you to put your camera in and then you can adjust the focus um, you know just by loosening this knob and sliding the camera up and down but I found this was really poor uh, really badly built and also it was really difficult to get the entire frame in focus because when you tighten up this knob um, any movement side to side 
or um, in any direction meant that the camera wasn't completely uh, parallel with the viewing surface and then that meant that parts of the image were out of focus. And the other thing is that um, the camera just swivels around in this port. So there's nothing to locate the camera so that it stays exactly on axis. And once you've got some cables coming off the top here like this, um, they start to pull the camera in kind of directions that you don't want it to go when you're moving the camera around. So it's pretty poor setup really. And you have to buy this little attachment, which I did buy at the time, um, which is sort of a C-mount lens with a um, 0 0.5 times magnification so that you can fit more in the frame. Um, but this just has this really crappy O-ring, which I think is designed to sort of stop it rotating, but it doesn't. And if you look on YouTube, everyone ha ends up taping this to here, and it just is not a really very good setup at all. Um, so I think this thing costs about 50 quid, and that was a waste of money. This came with the uh, microscope, and this is just not really fit for purpose. It's completely useless. So what I ended up buying is this little pancake lens from Lapsung Gift. And this is a 0.35 times magnification, which is what I found gave roughly the same image as what I'm seeing through the eyepieces as you'll see through the camera. So um, the 0.5 wasn't quite right, and I don't know if that's a function of the particular camera and the sensor that's in it, but the 0.35 seemed to give the right result. Uh, but this is really nice. I'm not sure if you can see on the camera, there's a grub screw to hold this lens to the microscope trinocular port. And then underneath the camera, there's also another grub screw to hold the camera in place on this lens. And then when you adjust the focus with this focus ring, nothing rotates, so it all stays in place. You can just adjust the focus really nicely. And when you move the microscope around, also everything's locked in place, so you don't start rotating the image and everything. So this uh, has been significantly better um, than this um, crap that we got from Amscope, basically. And I think it cost about £44 delivered into the UK. I'll put a link down below to the eBay listing, but this is significantly better and sort of gives much better optical results. Because the other thing that I was finding with this trinocular port attachment is once you have sort of extended a bit further, which is what, I, in order to get the camera in focus, I needed it sort of in the top uh, two thirds of the adjustment here. And then also once you've got this lens in here, you get some really bad chromatic aberrations on the camera. So all of the edges of the frame, um, the colours were just completely off. It just looked terrible. So uh, I wasn't really very happy with that. Uh, this lens attachment seems to be significantly better. Now I've also been trying this particular camera. And this is a 21 megapixel camera from Banggood. And I'll put the link in down below. Um, it seems to be pretty good actually. Um, 1080p at 60 frames per second, but I think also you can record at 2K at uh, reduced frame rate if you want to. Uh, but this seems to give better performance than the two cameras that I was looking at before, and we'll have a look at the image quality in a little bit. Uh, but I have also ordered a camera with an IMX290 Sony sensor uh, with the autofocus thing, a bit like the one that Dave reviewed in his video. And we're going to try that out on this microscope when that arrives. I'm expecting it in about a week or two. Uh, but that should give really, really good images. It's got a really big sensor with really big pixels. Um, so yeah, we should get really good low light performance without any graininess. Now the other thing I wanted to have a look at was the lighting. Uh, and what I found with the ring light is just that it kind of gave quite bad performance in terms of what you were seeing on the camera. It's not too bad by eye, but you just get these dreadful re reflections uh, from the PCB. And I was having a look at ring lights, and you can get ones with polarizing lenses to get rid of the reflection. Uh, so just like you get polarizing glasses and stuff for when you're driving so that you don't get reflections in the rain, uh, you can get polarizers to polarize the light um, so that we don't get reflections from PCBs. So you wouldn't get all of this when you're moving the PCB around. Um, but I decided to try out this sort of gooseneck light attachment so this gooseneck light that I purchased to test instead of using the ring light is also from Lapsung Gift on the eBay. And that eBay seller does seem to have some really nice stuff. Um, and it arrives quite quickly and uh, absolutely no problems with that seller. So I thought I'd try this out. And what this has got is a pair of 3 watt LEDs and some really um, narrow angle collimating lenses because actually, sort of generally speaking, what you're illuminating for the microscope is a very small area and you're basically throwing away light if you use a wider angle. But uh, let's see if we can see it on the camera here. So what you end up with is two very fine spots 
uh, which are really great for illuminating your PCB and it's really quite intense. Obviously if you want the beam bigger you can just move the gooseneck lights up a little bit but what this does is it means that you get um, light coming from both directions rather than from the top and obviously you can move it around depending on what you want to do but it kind of helps the illumination um, if you're getting lots of reflections and you want to see the PCB in a slightly different way. So I've turned off the ring light now and we're just looking at it through with these lights and you can see depending on sort of what angle you choose you can either eliminate or um, illuminate the PCB from the side but it certainly seems to give much better results than the ring light. It has this dial up and down to change the brightness but I can't really see why you wouldn't have it anything other than full brightness because all that means is you get less noise on the camera. Through the eyepieces actually you can turn the light right down and, and still see perfectly uh, but these lights are quite nice. I think it's about 50 or 60 pounds shipped to the UK. It arrived within seven or eight days or something like that. No problems through Royal Mail once it got here. No import charges uh, for me on this occasion. And in terms of the head on the microscope, the image quality through the eyepiece is absolutely amazing. We can't really capture it with the camera uh, because the camera is definitely the limiting factor here. But when you view it through the eyepieces, um, you know, you're just blown away with the detail that you can see on the PCB. And it's the same with the Swift microscope. That also was really, really good through the eyepieces. Um, you know, you wouldn't be disappointed if you bought any of these microscopes. Uh, certainly leaps and bounds way better than any USB microscope or anything like that that you can buy. Um, but yeah, this is fairly pricey. I think overall I ended up paying about 650 to 700 pound plus import. Um, so you can see that's quite a lot more expensive than the Swift microscope for less than 200. So if you didn't need the trinocular port, definitely that Swift microscope uh, is great value for money. It came with the lights included and everything, so that's really good. Um, but um, this is also very, very nice. So I'm quite happy with this. I'm just not quite sure how to arrange the stand at the moment. So um, I'll have to fiddle around with it and just work out the best way to deal with it. Right, so up next we've got some PCBs from JLC PCB, and these are the PCBs in matte black finish, which is a new option on the website, but this is a really, really nice finish. I think any time that you had your board on display, especially if you chose the uh, Immersion Gold finish, uh, this gives a really nice look to your board. It's super matte, um, you know, no shine to it whatsoever really, and it just looks really nice, uh, and obviously the PCBs are really nice quality as well. So what these are are PCBs for my solder comparison test, which I'm going to record next. Um, and I think we're only going to compare 16 types of solder. I bought absolutely loads. Literally, it's cost so much money. Uh, but I kind of got, got really interested in uh, trying to find a solder that I used to use in the past. Um, and I was trying out all different types of flux and uh, alloys and that kind of thing. But I think we're going to restrict it to 16. So we'll start with some low-cost ones from China and then go up to some more expensive types of solder. But what we'll do is we'll solder some pin headers onto these onto the microscope, um, you know, one row of pin headers per type of solder and see how the solder flows. And then we've also got another board here with 16 gold pads. And I thought what we'd do is put a measured amount of unmelted solder in the centre of each pad, heat this up on the infrared heater and maybe add some hot air if we need to, um, to see how the solder flows on its own. So we'll have the same amount of solder on each one and see how it flows to fill the gold pad and whether it fills the gold pad and that will sort of test basically what the flux and the alloy composition is like. Obviously the highest spread means that the flux is the most active or there's the most flux in the uh, solder wire. Um, but yeah, it might be an interesting comparison just to see how that works. But yeah, these PCBs are really nice. You can order them from JLC PCB for no extra cost compared to the green PCBs. So I think at the moment it's $2 for five boards plus shipping, um, but for this finish is really, really nice, and I think these arrived uh, within a week uh, via DHL, uh, but yeah, really nice boards. So this is how the PCB looks up close, and you can see the surface finish is really nice. Uh, we've got some vias here just to see what they look like, and the whole registration on those vias is absolutely bang on. Uh, I think these are the smallest vias that they do. Even the silk screen is really nice quality, but the, uh, the board itself and the board finish and the immersion gold finish is uh, really nice. And for the price, you know, you really can't complain at all. Uh, what we might do in a future video is I might DIY a PCB uh, using the old method of uh, ferric chloride and exposing it at home. 
and order it from JLC PCB at the same time, and then we can do a comparison on uh, on how they look and the advantages between the two. But yeah, these boards are really, really nice, and for the price, absolutely amazing. Right, so on to some items that have just arrived via UPS. Um, I had quite a few comments recently on um, my soldering videos about what flux cleaner I was using uh, to get the flux off the board after soldering. And this is the stuff that I tend to use. It's the Electrolube Flux Clean. Uh, but I think I bought this in a pack of six for something like £20. And now the price has really gone up. So these are at least £10 a can, uh, which is just, you know, a little bit on the pricey side, really, especially when you compare it to isopropyl alcohol, which is significantly cheaper. But this is better at doing the task than IPA. Uh, it has some additional surfactants and hydrocarbons in it to, uh, to lift the flux off the board. Um, so it does make the job significantly easier. So I had a little look around on the internet and I came up um, across some of this uh, Thermopasty uh, branded stuff and I've used some of their stuff before and it's really low cost and really good value. And this stuff arrived from TME in Europe um, and they are seem to be like sort of the main distributor for this brand of uh, soldering equipment. But um, this is one litre of alcohol based cleaner and I think it was about five pounds. So I bought four of those um, so yeah, these were these were very good value and it seems to uh, smell exactly like this so the formulation can't be that far off based on my nose. Um, I also found this water-based cleaner which is more suited to flux pastes that are either no clean or aqueous clean uh, where you don't need the alcohol um, and these were really really cheap. Let me see, um, I think it was £1.27 uh, per one litre bottle so super cheap there. Um, so I bought six of those um, to keep me going and I thought maybe if I obtain a ultrasonic bath we can see how well these cleaners perform. There is one specifically for ultrasonic baths but it's about ten times the price so I thought we'd see how we get on with one of these in there. Uh, and then a few other bits and bobs. So we've got some solder here, uh, one kilo and this is going to be the last reel of solder that I'm going to buy for quite a long time I think. Uh, but this is um, this should be a really nice solder. It's got the SW26 flux in it, which is quite an active flux, um, and it's got all the halides and everything in it. So uh, really bad for your health, but really good for your soldering. Um, so this was quite cheap, £25 for a kilo, which is um, you know not far off half the price of some of the other branded solders. Also got some flux paste. Um, these were not very expensive either. I think these were about £1.50 or something like that per tin. So there's way more flux in here than, uh, than is going to last me in my lifetime probably. And then a few other fluxes here. So we've got some uh, no clean flux. This is AG5 and this is the liquid rosin free moderately active flux. So this um, should be ideal for general PCB work, rework when you want to use a liquid based flux. There's also another one which looks to be pretty similar, LP1, uh, and this is chloride free as well, so a little bit uh, healthier for you to use in the environment. And then a rosin based flux TK83. And after the soldering video, we're going to do a comparison on some different types of fluxes, so um, we can try it on these. But basically, the rosin based flux is going to need the alcohol based cleaner, and these two can use the water based cleaner, which is a lot cheaper to use so uh, it'll be interesting to see if there's any performance hit by not using the rosin based flux. And then finally a couple of brushes just for cleaning up the PCBs. I've always actually just used an artist paintbrush uh, along with some tissue to clean up the boards uh, but these have got some quite stiff bristles. Uh, it's made from an ESD plastic and it should help with uh, cleaning the flux off the board so um, these were super cheap as well. I think the whole lot cost me around £70 delivered uh, which isn't too bad at all. So I think that's about it for this video. I hope you found it useful. Uh, we'll discuss more on the microscope as things evolve. So when I get that new camera, we'll try it out and see how that behaves. Um, and I'll put the links down below for all of the items that I've discussed in this video. But hopefully you found it useful. And until next time, thanks for watching.